Toto and Kento Nanami are two sorcerers who represent the rank of grade 1 very well. Nanami is a seasoned veteran with tons of experience as a sorcerer and the tragedies that come along with the job. Toto is an up and coming talent with high physical stats and even higher levels of intelligence. With that being said, who is the stronger sorcerer? And depending on the circumstances, which of these two would leave the ring alive if they were to come to blows? In this video, I'll be taking a look at these characters' physical stats, intelligence, hacks, and battle strategies in order to determine who would win and why. Now, as I do with all of my Jujutsu Kaisen versus battles, I will kick this fight analysis off by assessing the physical abilities of the two fighters. For the sake of respecting Nanami's seniority here, let's start by taking a look at some of his feats in the physical department. When it comes to Nanami's physical abilities within the series, we have a decent amount of information to pull from. For starters, we see in the versus Mahito arc that in terms of speed, he is relative to Mahito in his initial stages of growth. Chapters 21 and 22 show their relativity pretty clearly as he shows the ability to not only land hits on Mahito, but is also able to avoid dangerous attacks and counter with his own. The only instance in this fight where Mahito's speed is blatantly superior comes from Mahito amping his own movement speed, specifically by changing the shape of his soul. This isn't too relevant to scaling Nanami simply because Mahito does not use this ability at any other time in the series. In any case, Nanami scales pretty closely in speed to this early version of Mahito, who later in this arc scales relative in speed to an enraged Yuji. He even shows up to save Yuji from an attack from Mahito and proceeds to fight in tandem with his understudy. Generally speaking, I think it's implied by the story that at this point Yuji and Nanami are relative fighters, just speaking from a pure speed standpoint. There is something to be said about the fact that Nanami is fighting on par with a Yuji that has just been given forced acupuncture, but the relativity is there nonetheless. Both of his fights with Mahito actually make up a majority of his baseline speed feats. Anything that happens in the Shibuya incident arc, for example, would be him in overtime, considering the fact that the time in which the events would take place happen after he should be off the clock. In terms of speed, overtime Nanami should scale very definitively above Mahito and Yuji in the versus Mahito arc, simply due to the stat boost that the extra curse energy should give him. He also has minor speed feats like blitzing Haruta and Shibuya, but considering that this character doesn't scale anywhere except above no Obara, it's actually not something super relevant to the discussion we'll be having in this video. I will say that within the Shibuya incident arc, Nanami does imply that he's overall much more competent than Maki in chapter 106, where he says that Maki should actually hang back and agrees with Naobito. I would assume that Nanami is not underestimating or purposely downplaying Maki for the same reasons that many conservative sorcerers do, and he just thinks that she can't handle the level of cursed spirit that he and Naobito can respectively. If you take this interpretation of his statements to be true, and Nanami really is a superior combatant than Maki at this point, he should scale vaguely above all of her feats, which include grabbing bullets out of the air, reacting to and damaging a constrained Hanami, and even being able to react to and block the attacks of Dagon within his domain. In terms of physical strength and striking power, there isn't much of a way to differentiate Nanami's base physical abilities and his efficacy with the ratio technique considering how directly intertwined these two things are. So for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to lump these two things together. For all of those who don't understand Nanami's hacks, the basic summary is this. Nanami's technique allows him to divide an opponent with lines. If Nanami hits you along the ratio point of 7-3, he creates a weak point and is able to deal extensive damage even to characters that have significant levels of durability. It can be overcome by sheer amounts of cursed energy used as protection or durability as shown in chapter 107 when Dagon gets hit by ratio technique without displaying any damage. Even after it gets hit by a combination of Naobito and Nanami's attacks, Nanami remarks that he did not take any significant damage and it's almost like he has an unlimited amount of HP. With his ratio technique, Nanami's total striking power allows him to easily break the limbs of characters like Mahito, even when those limbs are specifically reinforced forced by cursed energy. He is also able to force Mahito to evolve and create a domain expansion, all in order to avoid death at the hands of the two combo attack sorcerers. In Shibuya, Nanami is able to very easily tear through 
Haruto's defenses in Chapter 100, and would have killed him if it weren't for the luck-based curse technique that was possessed by this annoying-ass curse user. Most importantly though, we get a statement from Eno in Chapter 94 that directly compares the striking power of Yuji to Nanami. Eno does seem to have some sort of hesitation in comparing Yuji to Nanami directly, Considering the fact that Eno is a certified Nanami dick writer, I will say that it's likely his hesitation to put Yuji on Nanami's level is due to the fact that he favors his sensei in that regard. Regardless of whatever bias he may have, it's clear to see that Nanami's ability to deal damage should be relative to Yuji's at this point in the series. There is some debate to be had on what Eno means here, because depending on your interpretation, Nanami could just have relative striking power with ratio technique, or his own strength when combined with his curse technique would actually surpass Yuji's ability to deal damage physically. If you think that striking power refers exclusively to both of these characters' physical abilities unaided by cursed techniques or cursed objects or cursed tools, then essentially Eno is saying that Nanami can punch as hard as Yuji even without the ratio technique. Which, while possible, I think is a bit far-fetched considering the fact that in almost every example of Nanami using melee attacks, he activates his ability. Even when he just uses his fist, as shown in his conflict with Haruta, Nanami activates his technique. This fact makes me think that the comparison being made here is that Yuji's typical striking strength compares to Nanami's typical striking strength, technique included, which will be the assumption that I am acting under moving forward. What this relativity means for Nanami moving forward is pretty simple. He should be able to hurt a curse spirit as durable as Hanami with his attacks, considering that Yuji was able to in base. On top of this, Nanami should likely have enough AP to severely harm characters like Choso, just as Yuji was able to. Overall, Nanami's AP is actually super impressive, and definitely an important factor to any fight that he could find himself in. Now, typically, I would move on to the next segment of his scaling, moving to his durability, but the issue is that Nanami simply hasn't had the opportunity to show off very many examples of durability in the series. Against Mahito, whenever he is touched, he takes extensive damage just due to the fact that Mahito's abilities bypass conventional durability. And in his fights with Dagon and Jogo, respectively, he doesn't display the ability to take their attacks without significant amounts of damage. This doesn't mean that his durability is bad or non-existent by any means, but he seems to be up against very very tough opponent when it comes to showing off his own ability to take damage. I will say that his durability is likely high enough to compare it to Yuji in the early stages of his curse energy training. It is an assumption to say that he does scale this way, but I don't think that Nanami's scaling in durability relative to Yuji in the versus Mahito arc is that big of a leap. Unfortunately, there isn't something that concretely scales his durability much higher than this, so once again, for the sake of this video and the sake of using mostly empirical evidence, I'm going to stick with this. The reason his durability wouldn't just be as high as his striking power comes from the fact that ratio technique functions to make his opponents physically weaker, and as such doesn't help establish a super high level of durability for surviving under the stress of his own attacks. When it comes to Nanami's hacks and combat intelligence, there isn't that much to say in all honesty. I've already talked about his main abilities being the ratio technique and overtime, and in terms of specific intelligence feats, Nanami doesn't have any that really stand out to me. He's certainly an experienced sorcerer who understands the fundamental rules of Jujutsu battles, as well as being able to keep calm and collected under even intense duress. However, he doesn't have expressly good one-on-one -on -one intelligence feats simply due to his style of fighting. He has more minor instances that display his years of experience in combat IQ, however, like him picking up on the fact that Mahito's nose was bleeding despite his immunity to most physical attacks, his ability to determine that Naobito's extremely fast movement was because of some curse technique, and his ability to let Maki and Naobito know that they needed to converge on him and Megumi immediately without alerting Dagon. Feats like this establish Nanami as a very competent and accomplished sorcerer and definitely make him difficult for any opponent that cannot simply overwhelm him immediately. With that being said, Kento Nanami has been scaled and analyzed for this versus battle, and it's time to switch perspectives and talk about the third year student, Ao Toto. When it comes to scaling Toto and his abilities, it gets pretty simple considering only two fights need to be referenced for all of his present scaling. 
In terms of AP, the only relevant feat he has going for him is being able to harm Hanami with his attacks in tandem with Yuji. In chapter 49, Hanami confirms that both Toto and Yuji individually can hurt him and long term could lead to a bigger problem in the fight. This obviously places Toto on even footing with an in the zone Yuji, who should not only possess multiple permanent training in Black Flash Amp, but should also be temporarily stat boosted because of the fact that directly after using a Black Flash, users enter a state that allows them to manipulate and control cursed energy on a completely different level. This means that in comparison to base Yuji, Toto should actually be vaguely above strength wise. It would be nice if we could pull some AP feats from Toto's fight with Maito considering that it is much more recent storyline wise, but unfortunately Maito's technique makes it almost impossible to determine how much damage he is actually taking against opponents not named Yuji Itadori. That being said, Toto scaling above a base beginning of Shibuya Yuji is nothing to seize at especially when you consider the fact that physical abilities are Yuji's selling point. Now, some of you may wonder exactly why I'm equating Yuji post Black Flash and Goodwill, even though there is an arc between these two moments. And the short answer for that is nothing implies that Yuji has gotten stronger in between these two points in time. Typically, whenever Yuji gets some sort of power up or amp in his abilities, it is accompanied by either feats that support that fact or statements that lend to that idea. At this point, Yuji has neither meaning that empirically speaking, there is no reason for me to determine that he has gotten stronger, especially not stronger than the amp that Black Flash should give him when he's in the zone. In any case, Toto's AP should be somewhere above Yuji's base level of attacks at the beginning of Shibuya while still being relative. His durability would just directly correlate to this because of Newton's third law. Every action has an equal and opposite, blah, 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 you know the deal. In order to strike at his level without damaging his fist or tearing himself apart from the force, Toto's body has to be able to withstand his own attacking power, meaning that he should be able to contend durability wise with Yuji level attacks for a time without dying or being even severely injured. In certain do or die situations, Toto even seems to be able to instinctively reinforce parts of his body to withstand the force of a black flash strike from Mahito, Mahito being someone powerful enough to permanently scar Yuji with his base attack. This is further supported by the fact that he's able to block strikes from Mahito with his arms without taking any damage. Once again, this Mahito is someone powerful enough to harm a character as as durable as Yuji very consistently. Overall, Toto's durability and strength should be comparable if not superior to Yuji's post power-up scaling, which is something that your average sorcerer can't say themselves. Toto's speed is somehow even easier to scale than his attack potency. Long story short, he's relative to Mahito in Shibuya. This same Mahito is able to react to Yuji in combat very consistently, meaning that Toto should stack up to this level as well. I'm well aware that he is stated to be slower than both Mahito and Yuji in chapter 130, but the fact that he reacts to Mahito in Shibuya here, 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 and here shows that there are several instances of Toto keeping up with Mahito and Yuji while they are in the zone, all before he hits his own Black Flash and starts moving with his potential ramped up to 120%. This means that while the statement is true, Yuji and Mahito are faster than Toto, they are all still in the same ballpark of speed, all being able to react to and tag each other in combat. Simple, yet impressive speed scaling for Toto. If you for some reason wanted to try to lowball Toto's speed due to the Mahito and Yuji statement, you could just compare him to Yuji and Hanami all the way back in the Goodwill arc, where he shows several feats of relativity to both of these characters through the corresponding chapters. So even in the worst case scenario, Toto scales to an amped Goodwill Yuji in speed. And as we've already established, this amped Goodwill Yuji should be relative to his Shibuya arc self. Pretty solid stuff, considering that this would also just be a massive lowball for Aototo. That being said, I don't plan on staying in this speed section for too long because of how simple his speed scaling truly is. Now, interestingly enough, Toto's Hex essentially does for his effective speed what Nanami's ratio technique does for his effective striking ability. Toto's Boogie Woogie allows him to swap places with things by merely clapping his hands, so long as the thing he is swapping with possesses a certain amount of cursed energy and is within range, he can clap his hands and switch places with it or make two things swap places themselves. In his fight with Hanami, this technique is absolutely essential as it allows Toto to protect Yuji and keep any fatal attacks from landing on either of the two characters. This has been deemed extremely confusing by both Hanami and Mahito, the latter being a cursed spirit prodigy who already knew the inner workings of the technique before coming across it. In fact, 
In the Mahito fight, Boogie Woogie is such a troublesome ability to deal with that Mahito decides that it is simply too difficult to get his hands on him in a straight up conflict and opens a domain expansion despite the lingering danger of Sukuna existing. Even Hanami deemed it necessary in his fight to pull out his most powerful ability and seal Toto within his domain in order to guarantee a hit on the elusive super genius. It's actually such a busted ability that Toto could actually fight people that are objectively faster than him consistently so long as he has the reaction speed to clap on time. Case in point, the Mahito fight. As I established in the speed section of the fight, Toto has to be relative to both Mahito and Yuji in speed, considering the fact that Mahito can react to and tag Yuji, and Toto, while aided by Boogie Woogie, can completely avoid Mahito's attacks. However, relative does not mean equal. You see, as I brought up earlier, the narrator statement in chapter 130 illustrates the fact that Yuji is able to move faster than Toto, and that Mahito is even a step above Yuji in speed. Meaning that, in spite of being objectively slower than Yuji, Toto was able to avoid more attacks than him simply due to Boogie Woogie. This is a pretty damn useful thing to know, considering that this means Toto is damn near untouchable by people even relative to him in speed. And when you combine this ridiculously broken yet simple hacks with his computer-like 530,000 IQ, you get an opponent that a majority of the verse would be very unlucky to have. That being said, it's time to decide who will win this battle. Is it the seasoned veteran with years of experience and an offensive technique that will take the victory, or is it the evasive genius gorilla that will come out on top? When it comes to assessing the outcome of a battle between Toto and Nanami, there are two core questions you need to ask yourself. The first one is this, can Toto avoid Nanami in battle completely? And the second one is this, can Nanami handle multiple attacks from Toto even while dealing with the disorienting effect of Boogie Woogie? If Toto can't completely avoid Nanami, it becomes very difficult to see a path for victory for him, simply because Nanami's strength, combined with the ratio technique, would likely break or completely destroy any part of Toto that it touches. And if Nanami doesn't have the durability to survive several attacks from Toto while he gets acclimated to Boogie Woogie, he will immediately fold under the onslaught of unguarded attacks that he would be bombarded with. So based off the scaling that I presented in this video, let's try to answer these two questions. Based on my analysis of both of these characters, I would confidently say that Toto can avoid Nanami in battle completely. At best, you have Nanami scaling slightly above a pre-Black Flash Eugene speed. This isn't bad scaling by any means, but it absolutely pales in comparison to the speed feats that Toto shows off even as early as the Goodwill art. He shows the ability to keep pace with and even predict the movements of two characters significantly faster than the Yuji that Nanami scales to. Between the two arcs, Yuji either gets feats or statements that explicitly demonstrate power-ups several times. In fact, between the two points in time of the versus Mahito arc and the end of Goodwill, Yuji has three amps more than he did previously. Three amps that Nanami has no scaling to, unfortunately. On top of this, Toto demonstrated the ability to not get touched once by an opponent that is actually faster than him. Only getting subsequently injured after being caught off guard by an extremely fast domain expansion and then a off guard hit from Mahito. This means that when aided by Boogie Woogie, it is going to be impossible for Nanami to ever hit Toto, much less line up his attacks precisely enough to land his ratio technique. And sadly for Nanami, he doesn't have the durability to take several off guard attacks from Toto while he gets used to the absolutely insanely disorienting ability of Boogie Woogie. You see, at best, Nanami's durability would scale somewhere around the beginning of Shibuya Yuji's, and Toto's attack potency would actually scale vaguely above that, because as I explained earlier, he shows relativity to a Yuji with the same stance but amplified by being in the zone just after hitting a black flash. This isn't to say that Nanami is getting one shot or anything, in fact it's very likely that his body would hold up under a lot of the punishment that Toto could deal out, but the fact that he would be repeatedly attacked without any room for offense, combined with the fact that he likely wouldn't be able to reinforce the parts of his body being attacked properly because of the confusion means that eventually he would fall victim to Toto and his technique. Even if you use overtime Nanami and vaguely increase all of his stats, none of his overtime feats, statements, or lore are good enough to make me think that he could deal with Boogie Woogie better than Mahito did pre-domain. Overall, the outcome of this fight boils down to the fact that Nanami would never be able to hit Toto and the opposite is not true. In case it wasn't obvious, the victor of this versus battle is Ao Toto. Hope you enjoyed this video, and if you want to see more like it, check out this playlist of Jujutsu Kaisen versus battles right here.